All righty, traders. This is Blake Morrow, and um, good morning, Bran. How are you? Um, I, I'm sorry to be, I feel a little aloof this morning. Um, you, you know, and I've talked about this. You know, some of you may or may not know this. I have a I have a dog that is um, 14. And she's start, she's, I say starting over the last couple of years, she's had some serious health issues. Let's just uh, say, I'm really happy that the lower level of my home is not carpeted. I, I think you guys can kind of draw the conclusions from there, right? Um, unfortunately, there's, it's like, uh, you know, I'm the first one awake in the morning. And so I, I deal with a lot of things, if you will. And so uh, today was a bit of a bit of a mess. I actually have to call in professionals today. So, um, so you have to excuse me if I'm frantically running around or sounding a little, you know, off. Um, I'm dealing with a couple of personal things that, you know, uh, how how many of you have animals? Do you guys have like animals, like dogs, cats? You know, anybody out there? Yeah, Gavin's like used to. Yeah, it's you know the the end of life. Um, Hugo's got two dogs. Yeah, I got three. You know, it's uh the end of life stuff is not is not fun. It's not fun. You know, it's it's not fun for any. I think any being living organism, but man, it is just. Um, I think it's worse with dogs and cats because they can't. You know, they can't communicate with you. You know, so. Um, Chad said, yeah, we had to put ours down last year as well. 10 years old. I know that she's been with us for 14 years and I'm, I'm, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, literally the nicest dog in the world, like couldn't hurt anything and just happy go lucky, like, and still aside from some, you know, issues, um, yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. I got, I got to continue on it. I, I just want to explain that to you guys. If I sound a little off and, uh, I've got, like I said, I got to call in professionals today to deal with some things and um, I'm leaving to go out of town tonight. On top of that, <laughs> I, had to, I had to switch out a dish dishwasher disposal last night too. That was fun. Um, I don't know the things you get to do like that. It's like, I, it's like, you know, seems like when there's they things happen like in, you know, threes, I guess. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway. Yeah, you know, Paul, we're kind of the same way as you, actually. Um, yeah, Bran, I, I know, I know. It's tough, tough calls. All right, I'm sorry. Let's get, let's get started. So here's the euro. Euro is flirting with some pretty big support here. Notice what today's low is: sixteen uh, seventy-two. Well, we wrote down support, right? Oops, one sixteen sixty-five. Big support here, and then below that. You know, you got to imagine we're going to break it. So that that's just you got to just think that way, right? So the next support after that is one sixteen. So just it should be a pretty, oh, I say, pretty straight shot, uh, a relatively straight shot to one sixteen um, below one sixteen sixty five. I would think. Okay, uh, resistance. You know, while we're below one seventeen fifty, we have to stay. I think we have to stay bearish. I know. Um, I think we're going to just have to denote that for now. Uh, this sterling got absolutely crushed today. Absolutely smashed. And we are testing or really close to testing. If you guys missed the update this morning on Forex Analytics, that's the spike high from 2019. That comes in at 135.40. Uh, one, wait, hold on. What's the spike high there? 135.14. So I'm writing that down. Sorry, it's got to be written down. 135. Well, I'll just write down 135.15, put a bunch of asterisks next to it because that is, um, that's key. And if that breaks, I mean, problem that the sterling has right now is you have to imagine it has not been able to, um, Oh, I know. Kevin says, uh, sorry, I have to say this one last time. Be in the room with your dog when they when they go. So your dog sees you 
um, the last time I, I know, you know, um, oh God, I had the, my, I had to put down my favorite dog, um, of all time, uh, 10 years ago. And it was one of those things that had, um, was having, um, seizures and it was like a Saturday night and we were watching, um, uh, movies with the kids. And I mean, dog was 10 years old, but he was still in really great health. Um, it's one of those situations where, you know, I'm at the vet at, on a Saturday night at like midnight and, uh, the, the vet's like, I could, I could put this off for, for a week, but you have to ask yourself, who are you doing this for? You know, is it, and just like when I came home without a dog, I mean, my family was destroyed. Uh, me and I mean, I, I think I was destroyed for the following week. Um, it's just not easy, man. I mean, it's never easy. Of course, just, God, it's just ugh. all right. Anyway, sorry, back to it. So resistance today, you have to imagine if we get a bounce here to 130. Let's, let's just say we get a bounce to 136. That should find some resistance. Um, this whole area, just in case we get a you know bounce and risk pretty aggressive, that whole area should offer resistance, right? So that's going to be 136, 60, 136. I'm writing both those numbers down. Because you know how it is. It, what could happen is... Um, <laughs> Paul said problem with Sterling is has no fuel pun intended. <laughs> right. Um, the problem is, is if we get up here, uh, you know, it, it, it could squeeze, you, you know how it is, you know, you, you squeeze back to resistance. Everybody gets short right there. Then they're like, Oh yeah, you guys just got short. We're going to squeeze it a little further and they're going to ramp it up to that one thirty six fifty. So, I, I mean, unless you're short right now, I don't know if I'd, you know, you could take a pop shot at it at 136, but just realize that it it could it could squeeze even further than that. Aussie. Okay, so the Aussie is, you know, we break through 7220. There's not a lot of turning back now after that one. So um you guys know 7320, that's key resistance. While that holds, we have to be bearish. This is a bear flag pattern. So 7220 that is key support now and we're there i mean we're we're i mean we're 30 pips away from it but you know we break that the next spot is 7180 i'll write that down but this is 78 percent retracement 7, 7 180 <sighs> Kiwi. So we broke support. That's been holding us for a while. I, I'm, I'm going to still keep the Kiwi as range bound, but um, intraday it's bearish, I think. I'm not going to write down resistance as that. I'm going to write down resistance at 70 and a quarter. Sixty nine forty, oh boy, uh, these spike lows down here. So I'm gonna write down sixty nine thirty. It is range bound dollar CAD, big bounce off of uh, off of this support here, and see how it's keeping higher lows. Not convincingly, but it is. So that makes this trend line support very, every, every, very, very, very important. You guys know the big risk of the dollar Canadian right now, right? I mean, it's it's crude oil, any which way you slice it. That's that, yeah, Gavin oil, exactly. It's the biggest risk. Um, Notice how we're taking out this uh, this little downtrend line. I wouldn't get too excited about the dollar Canadian. It's not acting well, but um, and then also the Canadian yen's been breaking out higher. That's squeezing everybody. You know, this resistance up here around one twenty seven, one twenty seven 
40 or so that should offer really good resistance. Oh, shoot. What was I writing here? Uh, 126.80. <laughs> like total typo right there, huh? That's uh, that's key. Oh, no, that's 125.80. Sorry, 12580. That's key. There we go. Okay. Like that was like super dyslexia, right? 92 super dyslexic excuse me 72 to 93 i'm sorry 92 to 9330 range bound range bound dollar yen i mean i uh, there's a there's a lot of you know a lot of things pushing the dollar yen right now we were just chatting about all that in the chat room. What key resistance here? I mean, look, I'm not going to sell dollar yen. I mean, but if I was going to do it, this is the time to do it. I mean, that that is really key resistance, right? It is. So, I mean, if you want to sell it, this is the place to do it. I mean, we could squeeze and reach the 127% extension in the top of this uh channel which that's what i think is happening but you know intraday 111 60 66 is big right 111 that's big um any dip back down to this level should be pretty well supported today if we get a dip down there but notice how these yen pairs are moving right Hello, volatility, 110.80. And if you think I'm going to put it on bullish, you're crazy. Not doing that yet. No, no, thank you. The minute I go, I go, I get bullish dollar yen is probably the minute it drops 200 pips. <laughs> it probably is, right? Dollar index, huge resistance here. Uh, 93.75. I know we've been higher than that, but. I do believe we're whoops. I do believe we're bullish though. I think I think this is now event, an eventuality that we break higher. Um, and let's stay bullish while we're above 93. Dollar Mexican peso. Big break today. So any dip now to here. Should be pretty well supported. Probably that blue line, because um, you can see some of the spike highs right there. It's just below that resistance, and that resistance just enough to kind of, you know, if if it if you get a little bit of a dip, like oh, people get long, you know, because they're they're thinking that, and then we get a dip like that. Just whoops, just just enough to squeeze out everybody, right? So. So support should be somewhere around this 2015 level. Um, and uh, I got to flip it to bullish because we're, oops, damn it. You know, I tweeted about this, that this being the VIX of, uh, of, um, of the market. Well, it is. And so if you see the dollar Mexican peso spiking up like this, you've got to be thinking, you know, there's a good chance that we break 4,400 today. You know, it's risk off, right? So next resistance is 2032. That should offer resistance today. I think you have to be buyers on dips like to 2015 if you can get it. Dollar note. Remember, A55 is the 200-day uh, moving average. A55, 880. 
I'm long. I'm not really super happy about it because it's not really doing much. It's just kind of, but it is bouncing off the 200 day moving average. I mean, I have to give it, I have to give it this much. I mean, you know, it's got the megaphone support. It's got the 200 day moving average, but you know, with crude oil, <laughs> I mean, look at this thing. I mean, cr crude is at risk of, of really making it past 80 today. And, you know, that's going to just <sighs> stuff. Uh, stuff just asked, did the dollar yen form a double top on the daily? Let, let me make something really clear to you guys. The, and this is stuff. This is to everybody. Just because you're, you're hitting a resistance doesn't make it a double top. All that does is make it resistance. Like I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, the Euro Sterling. Okay. It hit the high here and high here. Everybody's like, oh, double top. Like, no, it's not a double top. It's a double top if you break the neckline, then it goes lower and then you can, you, you use the range to find out how far it's going to move. Okay. This, when you, 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 you hit highs like this, what happens is you build what we call bullish wedges. In this case, it'd be a bullish. It's, it could, it could be a bullish wedge. It could be a double top. So, um, you know, if, if we are here and this could happen, and I'm not saying that it can't happen. Let's say that high holds, let's say, you know, you know, we start World War III. Uh, I'm I'm joking, but you know, trying to give you an extreme example. We hit highs, we reverse, we we break through this low right here. Then you can actually measure that being a double top measured down to 106. That's entirely possible. It is resistance though. So if you want to short the dollar yen, like I said, the dollar yen's perfect perfect risk reward if you want to be on the short side, like if you're like, I am, I'm a seller and you have all the conviction in the world, I'm going to, I'm a seller in the dollar yen because I don't think that what's her name is going to win the LDP race and did, you know, the yen's going to bounce We're corporate month end dollar is going to take a crap dive, whatever your, your reasoning is. And you want to sell the dollar yen here sell it. You got great risk reward. This is the perfect risk reward for somebody who's short with conviction. I don't, I don't have conviction. I don't. Um, I, I think it's, if, if I was going to short the dollar yen, I would short it here. I'm just not, I got my ass handed to me trading the uh, Euro yen last week. I was just talking to everybody in the chat room, guys. I literally made about 10% this month in the month of September on the US dollar South African Rand on this breakout. But I've given back, I, I'm, I'm saying just 10% total on, the, on my account has been in the dollar Rand. But that, if, if that would be if I didn't take any other losses in the market this month, which I have. And what like one of, the, one of my big losses was last week when I, I shorted the Euro yen like right here at like 128. 60 and I closed it at 129, whatever, 20 or 30 at, on Friday. I took a hell of a stinker right there. And that took away some of those gains. But um, the reason why I point that out is because I got clobbered in this Euro yen last at the end of the week last week. And I'm just not, I have no appetite to trade the yen right now uh, as a result because um, they, they did, they did exact opposite of what I thought they were going to do. So therefore I'm just kind of staying away. That's why I'm not going to short the dollar yen here, but I do think if you are a dollar yen bear, this is the place to do it, you know, but don't think it can't race up to one twelve and a quarter that channel resistance, right? That's entirely possible because if it starts squeezing and it can squeeze. All right, back to the charts. Sorry, uh, gold, silver, Bitcoin, S and P. Uh, 
S and P. So let me get rid of this harmonic that, that turned pretty good yesterday. So support for the S and P in my opinion is going to be right here and not there. It's that six, one, eight retracement. It's going to be 4375. That's going to be good support. I do think that this is bearish while we're below, especially now 4485, 4500, which is the underside of that trend line. You guys know that as long as we stay below those levels, I'm I'm a bear. Um, gold. We've broke that 17.35, okay? So now it should be bearish to 17.10. That's the 78% retracement, 161% uh, extension of that last move higher. That comes in at 117.10. So 117.10, oops, 17.10, I'm sorry. I don't know why I keep saying 117. This is bearish and it's bearish while we're below 17.60. So I'm gonna put 1760. I'm gonna put an asterisk here. That means while we're below that number, you gotta be bearish. Silver, uh, look at triangle support held, 22 held. I think we wrote 22 down yesterday, right? Well, it's an important hold for silver. And resistance, uh, I know we have 23, but you also have 2280, just for those of you that are really like focused in trading um, silver. I think we have to be bearish while we're below 23. Bitcoin, triangle, that makes 41.5 pretty important support. So we have 40K, 41,500. And then, um, you know, while we're below, this is triangle resistance is at 45K. So I, I'm, I'm actually going to keep, I'm going to keep Bitcoin in range right now. Um, uh, as much as I want to flip it to bearish, I just don't think that that's the right call. All right. So your bias chart's done. Steve Stelios, good morning, guys. Hello. Good morning. Hey. hey I, oh, I'm doing fantastic. I got to go do some cleaning. So I got to go. <laughs> It's okay. yeah, yeah. It's just it's it is really the bane of my existence right now. It's real. It's uh t challenging. Let's just put it that way. All right, guys. I'll, I'll let you guys go. Um, good luck, everybody. I'll see you on the daily roundup. Uh, talk to you later. Thank you, Thank Blake. You, mate. Good luck um, with that. Thank you. Let me just post the thingy onto the chat room. Bam. Okay. Um, so we go after face. You weren't there. Were you there, Steve? No, you weren't. No. Um, the markets are, are coming back just a little bit. So equity markets are finding a little bit of a bid. Still down on the day. Metals are coming back a little bit. We just uh, have to wait to see what happens with month and flows because it's um, you know it's not a truly representative uh, market. I don't. I tend to not trust it that much when there's a bias on a particular day. But anyway, um, we talked about a few things on FACE, about uh, Bank of England's Bailey being hawkish, but uh, the pound is, is suffering today. Uh, we also had Lagarde speaking, which we didn't mention on FACE, and she did say that uh, they still need an accommodative, uh, accommodative monetary policy stance to exit the pandemic safely and bring inflation consistently above 2% or 2%. Two, 2 and she did say that the, um, the challenge is not to overreact to transitory supply shocks that uh, have actually no bearing to the medium term. Um, and the target is inflation to stay durably uh, at or above uh, at 2%, basically. So, you know, she, Lagarde was maybe a little bit more cautious, but um, not telling us something we actually didn't know already. Um, other than that, not much to say. 
uh, we're still waiting to see what's going to happen with the debt, the debt ceiling uh, in the US. And um, a lot of people are acting as if it's, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be a huge problem. I, I personally don't see how they can let it, um, uh, they can actually leave it and not, not increase it accordingly and uh, let the government function. I mean, they've done it before obviously, and they could do it again. And we know how that ends, you know, some a little while later, everything goes back to normal. But uh, I just don't see why all the theatrics when everybody knows that this thing is going to get done one way or another, right? So... Um, you just gave the answer yourself. It's all about theatrics, then, you? Theatrics, yeah, yeah. I mean, For example, know you know very well that I'm not partisan. I'm not even a US citizen. And I've, I've talked shit about both types of government whenever, you know, their economic policies make no sense. Uh, During the previous administration, uh, government expenses and debt exploded, as it happens with every government during the past, like, 20 years. Like, they, 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 they blow up deficits even more than the previous one. And when you think you have a new record, then you get the next one and you get a new record. So, basically, as an outsider, I really can't see any difference between... Uh, what the Democrats are doing, having to do with the spending and deficits and what the Republicans are doing, right? Yeah. And the Republicans seem to have absolutely no problem with all the spending that came under Trump. Yeah. But now suddenly, suddenly they are, um, they want to be fiscally prudent, which I'm all for fis- being fiscally prudent. The problem is that if you've completely neglected that part when you're in government and then you try to pretend that you're fiscally prudent, the only thing you are is just a hypocrite, right? Well, don't, isn't it the same from both sides? Right? Yes, that's, what, yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I said. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yes. What can I say? Politicians these days, they're not, um, they don't inspire me, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> the least to say. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, in currencies, the dollar is a little bit stronger. But again, month end, I'm, I you know I want to see the rest of the week pan out, and then you know we 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 can make some decisions on to whether we're having a breakout or you know if we're back to the usual range. So I don't, unfortunately, I don't have much else to say. Uh, I'm going to be boring as always. No, that's not the case. <laughs> okay, so having to do with development today. I wasn't in phase, so I don't. You know, I'm I'm 100 sure that um, Blake covered some of the things I'm going to say. So I'm going to be brief, having to do with effects, because I know that Blake covers it extensively. But having to do with effects today specifically, although effects tends to have been boring mostly, you know, during the past several months, uh, but today there are several of the majors on important key levels. So I very briefly want to note that specifically Euro USD on top of the support area, right? This trend line support currently testing it as we speak. So key support area, we break below that, we open the door for more losses. The cable currently testing this trend line support uh currently just below it but you know since it's very early on the day i don't even take into consideration that i i'm going to wait until the end of the day so uh cable also in the precipice of a breakdown blake already showed that usd yen has now reached the previous high and um is currently testing it in my opinion and i said it when we were breaking out there i don't see any reason why would we would stall here i mean this looks to me like a healthy move and we might momentarily stall but i think the path of least resistance clearly remains higher here but in any case you know important resistance area usd cad once again today because earlier today usd cad was negative on the day um it, it has now turned positive and we've already formed an outside white candle, but it's still early on the day. So the daily candlestick might change form once again by the end of the day, more than once, actually, if it, if it really wants to. So USD CAD retested once again this channel strong line support seems to be holding for the time being, but you know, keyword being for the time being. Now, the DXY. 
is also testing this previous high and this descending trend line resistance. Now, that's not a surprise because it, it mirrors, in essence, what EURUSD has been doing. And I just showed you that the EURUSD was testing the equivalent trend line support, right? Because they are inverse to each other, obviously. So bottom line, what I'm trying to say here is that, in my opinion, this day can prove to be a rather important day having to do with FX developments. Um, and I just you know, gave you some major examples. Now, uh, coming back to what we have already said, what is going to be the deciding factor about what happens with all these pairs? And the answer is very simple and clear, and it is what equity indices are going to do. We talked about that yesterday also. I told you how important yesterday was having to do with a possible rejection uh, for indices that all of them, all the major ones were approaching broken um, ascending wedges, trend line supports. Um, and so far, so good, right? So far, we've turned lower and pre-market, it seems like uh, there is some really nice momentum going on today, right? Uh, almost 1% down in the S&P, uh, more than 1.6% down on the day in the Nasdaq. So, um, you know, we keep pushing lower in um, equity indices, then you should expect that the dollar should continue to uh, perform well. And you should expect all these currency pairs that we talked about to... Um, uh, either hold or break, you know, depends on which one we're talking about, in favor of the dollar. So that's why I think today is an important day, just because, you know, so many um, markets on pivot areas. Now, another one, I forgot to mention this, is USD MXN. I know that Blake is long, and for the time being, it looks like um, he, he might actually uh, do very well in this because the USDMXN is testing this trend line resistance. It's actually now uh, breaking above it, but you know, I'm going to, you know, um, hold back from uh, making any conclusions for the obvious reason. This is a daily ch a chart. This is, these are daily candlesticks and there is much to go, but you know, we break above this and we do know that USDMXN tends to do well under risk of conditions, right? So we keep on pushing lower in, in, uh, in indices. USD makes sense is probably bound to break higher and push towards the next upside target, which is at 2085. So keep that in mind as well. Now, at the same time, some of the uh, exotic ones are also doing really badly against the dollar for obvious reasons. Here is the USD South African Rand approaching this trend line resistance. Uh, here is the USD Turkish Lira trading, surprise, surprise, at all time highs. Uh, don't say that we haven't warned you about that, you know, uh, long in advance. Uh, and I think there is more to go, by the way, keep that in mind. I, I, I think it's, you know, with what I'm seeing, I think it's inevitable that um, uh, USD Turkish Lira is going to actually reach a double digit handle sooner rather than later. So um, yeah, keep that in mind. Use the INR still within this probably corrective consolidation, pushing higher, you know, nowhere near a breakout, but you know, I, I wanted to show it since we talked some of the exotics. Um, now, having to do with the rest of the assets that we're lo usually looking at, meaning gold, silver, etc. Uh, it makes sense that with uh, dollar doing well here, uh, gold and silver are um, underperforming again. We we had said several times that you know in the short term there is nothing really bullish looking in either of them. So there is you know there is a good chance that we're going to be pushing uh, lower for a lower low, uh, meaning below 1687 in the case of um, gold. Um, in the case of silver, we break through 22. As we said, the next, the immediate next downside target is at 21. So 22 still holding, uh, but you know the 
way that for like six consecutive, six, seven consecutive days, whatever it is, we haven't managed to really rebound of it, uh, doesn't make it look really good. It, it, you know, it seems that, yeah, you know, the chances of breaking down are very elevated. Now, notice how crude oil tested the previous high almost, I mean, just, just a few cents away from the previous high, and it's now pulling back. It makes sense. It's not easy for crude oil to, uh, to push strongly higher while we have risk of conditions. But having said that, I need to reiterate here that, that I don't expect risk of conditions to last much. And that's why I also don't expect crude oil to really stop doing well. Yes, it might pull back from here, but I very much doubt that we're going to see it deep below 70 again before we see it uh, pulling away uh, and going into the 80 handles. Uh, at least that's what I think. Now, natural gas could not care the least about any of that. Um, yesterday had an explosive day higher. Today, earlier in the day as well, we've now reached uh, earlier today above $6.2. And as I've said before, don't try to fade strength here. It's extremely, extremely dangerous. Okay. Uh, nothing really changing with platinum palladium. Platinum still holding within this descending channel. Palladium still remaining under pressure with the next downside target being at 1800. And I think that more or less concludes the things I was looking at and I had to um, mention. So I'm, I'm going to be more than happy um, to go through your questions. Did you did he just form a double top on the daily? Uh, I think Blake answered that. Calling something a double top or a, or a double bottom doesn't mean reaching resistance. It has to be rejected from resistance and then moving away from it, going to the first significant support area and then breaking down from that. And then it triggers a double top. So in order for this to be a double top, since you mentioned the specific currency pair, in order for this to be a double top, the following things have to happen. And this is just an example, like lesson with an example. We have to get rejected from here. We have to pull all the way back here to 108.70, that low. And then we have to break through 108.70. Then, and only then, we will have triggered the double top. Until that happens, double top is just a very low probability uh, assumption of what might happen from here. Nothing else than that. So where is the support in your eyes in, in uh, pound USD? I already answered that question. We are currently testing support, but I'm going to go back to it just to mention what, in my opinion, is the next downside target. So the next downside support, if that's the question. Uh, the closest one is the confluence of the 50% FIB and horizontal support area at 134.65. So definitely not uh, far away from where we are. And following that, we have the 61.8 at 132.77. Okay, so these are the next downside targets in the case of the cable. If we do close below this trend line support uh, by the end of the day today. Uh, there was a question about crude oil. I hadn't seen that, but in any case, I already did cover crude oil. Uh, so that has been answered as well. Uh, somebody mentioning the DXY doesn't really matter because I already covered the DXY. We are on top of key resistance. So, you know, you want to be sure the DXY, this is where you would be doing it. But we break above here, it means that the DXY will uh, want to extend higher. And if we do get risk of condition, conditions, it will extend higher with the next upside target being at 94.50, which is the 38.2% FIB of the last bearish leg lower, right? 94.50 to 95, 95 also important support resistance area. So that that area between 94.50 and 95 is the next area of interest in case we break higher from here, which looks likely. Um, there is where you should expect some kind of a reaction uh, to be found 
next. Anything else? Okay then. So thank you all very much. And um, thank you, Steve. Stay tuned because today might end up being an interesting day, which means that we're going to have updates, notifications, so on and so forth. Bye bye. Have a wonderful See rest of the day. Thank you. Bye bye, Steve. Thank you, Steve.